Let's bring in Northwestern Mutual Wealth Management CAO Brent Schutte. Northwestern Mutual manages $265 billion in client assets. Brent, it's good to have you back. Um, Thanks for having I me. mean, this recent, I guess very recent, outperformance of uh, small caps versus, say, tech, is that a one-off? You know, I, I, th I think timing is still uncertain on this, but I always point to the fact that the S&P 600 trades at 12 and a half times for 12-month earnings that have already been marked down by 13 to 15 percent. And so if you think about it, most of us on Wall Street have to put money to work on a daily basis. And I think a lot of people have been opting for quality and those large cap tech names because they're perceived to be more recession proof. And this is where I think the market has priced in some sort of recession, which I still think is inevitable. And so while there may be some more downside risk potentially in small caps, I mean, they are off 20 some percent from their highs. And I think the other side of a mild recession will see these names do well in the coming 12 to 18 months. And so that's where we're positioned more towards those names, largely because of valuation and the reality that I think they've discounted some sort of recession. Are you unnerved by some of the commentary that especially small and medium-sized businesses are having trouble accessing capital versus a year ago? Or maybe you're encouraged by the fact that some Fed officials are probably or, or have recently talked about why that's a reason to hold steady. Yeah, I think it's all the above. I think to me it's more along the lines of that I think they are priced in for a recession. And, and so I think the, you will actually get that. And then I think the opposite side of it, which will be very mild, certainly, and that means more of a mild downturn to me, will be these names doing much, much better, especially given the valuation discount and cushion that they already have priced into them. Uh, and so certainly I, I do think there is a, a growing debate on Wall Street or in the Fed about hiking more or not. Um, look, I, I don't think the Fed stops until they see the final embers of inflation uh, stomped out. And I think that's wage growth. Unfortunately, the, the record of the Fed and actually um, stomping out wage growth without creating a recession is very poor. What about um, the average investor's willingness to start playing in equities after having this playground of money markets uh, and 5% and returns? Do you see that? Do you think animal spirits come back when they get the sense that the Fed is done or maybe you want to be uh, selling the first cut? Yeah, I mean, we're underweight equities right now. And so I, I, I think there is this reticence of investors. I think they're actually more afraid to buy bonds right now. And so I haven't heard bonds talk much as much as I have recently in my 30 years of doing this now. And it's kind of interesting that after they finally yield something and there's actually a real yield cushion for buyers, they don't want to participate. They want to hide in the front end of the curve. And this is where I encourage investors to embrace bonds, uh, especially a, a little bit further out on the curve, because no one knows for certain where rates are going to be two, three and five years from now, which I think the answer is probably lower. And I think they'll protect you uh, against uh, the downside of a recession. And so we're more towards the, uh, the bond side. And it's, it's really interesting that no one wants to buy these after yeah. they bought them at rock bottom yields before. Yeah, no, now now they're selling them big time. And, yeah. and in fact, Brent, we just saw a, a move up the 10 year now above 491%. I don't know if this is why, but it did coincide with when President Biden was speaking in Tel Aviv and asking for an unprecedented aid package that he's going to request for Israel um, at the end of the week from Congress. I do wonder about the, the fiscal risk here and whether that is becoming a factor for Treasuries in a way that we haven't seen in a while and whether that makes it a different proposition. Potentially. I mean, the one thing that's really interesting is the move lately higher in treasuries on the longer end has been all in real yield. Inflation expectations, uh, at least in the bond market here, haven't changed at all. It's all been people wanting more premium for the risk that well, they're taking. Well, that's why I bring it up, I think too. It's perfectly, which I think right now you're, you know, you're at 2.4 or 2.5 percent real yield in the 10 year. I think people should be um, encouraged that some of that risk that you're talking about is already priced in. Uh, and that's where I think there's opportunities pushing forward.